Football on Off the Ball. With Sky. Get more of the sports you love on Sports Extra with BT Sport and Premier Sports. I'm prepared to end it my well, do, it then. Again. do it then. What about your start to the game? I was, it wasn't bad, was it? <laughs> Why should be an honest answer be a mistake? How can a modern day manager not have a mobile phone? Why should he? Oh. Your welcome along football show is coming at you. Very happy to say Dion Fanning of the currency here in the studio. Hello. Hi Joe, how's it going? Let's talk World Cup now before Carabao Cup takes over tomorrow. Yeah, I know. It's <laughs> just it's just non-stop fun and excitement. Uh, well it's official, Dion. And we can talk off the pitch in due course, but uh, they managed to get the best World Cup I've ever seen over there. The best World Cup you've ever seen, not just the best World Cup final you've ever seen. Best World Cup, yeah. Now, I'm only going back to 94, mm. but it's the best World Cup since 94. I can say that with confidence on the pitch. Yeah, I think you, I agree with you. I think you're right. Um, made by a final two that was, I don't know if there's any, any doubt about where it stands. I don't, I, I've never seen a final like that. We've had epic semi-finals and any final, like I, any final I've watched or been to, it's always been, it's had moments of drama. It's had... Uh, you know, Zidane in 2006, moments like that. But there was never anything like like what we saw yesterday. Because usually if somebody was to <gasps> posit a, a theory after the World Cup final uh, that that was the best World Cup final we've ever seen, there would be an array of responses to say, no, it's not. This quickly went from not just is this the best World Cup final we've ever seen to is this the best final in the history of football, full stop. Maybe the best game in football full stop that's how assured it was instantly of its place as best final yeah and I think and the only thing that then stops people saying that is they talk about the quality compared to you know the Champions League or Barcelona in in, uh, at their peak with Messi Mm. um, and and those displays of pure beauty and brilliance they're they're the the best displays yeah no no what I'm going to say is that I think that isn't that's, that's an entirely different thing yeah um, for dr- drama and tension, and 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 plot twists, yeah. this this at everything, and you know you you forget, you, like you forget things like the Martinez save, an extra time, yeah, which just seems like oh yeah, of course he was going to. I didn't, <laughs> going to save that. didn't appreciate that until I saw the screen grab afterwards because once too much was happening to Ooh. dwell on it, yeah, and I'm not sure we were ever shown such a clear replay and and too many things happened after and it was quickly forgotten but then yeah when you see the replay or so when you see the screen grab and he's at full stretch he's full uh, Schmeichel star jump Mm. uh, I mean one of a bazillion amazing moments across the whole evening Filippo Clare is with us good evening good evening to you best World Cup final you've seen Uh, most uh, riveting from minute 80 onwards Probably the worst until then, because the one team was so much uh, on top of the other. So there wasn't much, there wasn't much of, much of a match. But what happened afterwards in terms of uh, drama was quite unprecedented. Uh, certainly in the final, not necessarily in the game. I, I I would think that I can see quite a quite a few games which were much better in the World Cup history. I can think of uh, Brazil Italy uh, in 1982. I can think of France Argentina 1982. Play, I could think of plenty of games in 1982, but as, as far as finals are concerned, in terms of the quality of the football, I have to say it was almost secondary because some of the football was pretty atrocious, to be honest, especially if you were French. And uh, when you see balls like uh, hoofed into touch or just passed into touch, as many as were, it, it was not that great. But in terms of the drama and what happened from minute 80 onwards, it was... Well, I, I haven't quite got over it, and uh, you wouldn't expect that from me anyway. But I, to, if you talk about the football itself, I would say that the, um, uh, and of course that's going back a, a bit, but we have got the images. 1970 World Cup was better. Um, final, that is. Um, but this one had things that no other has had before. And um, in the image of this tournament, which is such an, an ambiguous one, in which we've had so many things to celebrate and so many things to uh, not celebrate. Um, and, and they were coexisting and they coexisted again yesterday. And I suppose this is an image of our world uh, because you you had the Moroccan team going to the semifinals and what style they showed in doing that. 
Um, you had, of course, the, the Messi story. You have the Mbappe story. You could carry on the Australians. Let's not forget them, who were magnificent. The Japanese. Um, there were so many, so many great stories. But at the same time, it's a World Cup that that remains tainted. And I'm sorry if I put a little bit of a flat on the uh, on the, on the score here, but we shouldn't forget about that either. Um, it was a fantastic World Cup, despite the fact that it was a World Cup. That's the way I would put it. But it was fabulous. And last night, well, last afternoon was just astonishing. Something we will remember for a very, very long time. And images that, and it's not just the uh, uh, the, the sore finalist um, who speaks here. Um, there, there were things. I, I still, I'm, I'm still thinking about this save from Wernie from Martinez. It's like that probably is the best save I've ever seen in a World Cup. I mean, I think it will be up to the standard of Gordon Banks and Pelé. It's one of those incomprehensible saves. Mm. There's no... How, how does he stop that? I don't understand. Philippe, if we knew we'd be goalkeepers, I have no idea. Uh, so, and, and to, <laughs> to Philippe's point, uh, Dion, again, to take this greatest final that we've ever seen, or one, was certainly one of the great games that we've seen, it is an extraordinary thing that on 62 minutes the graphic flashed up on the screen. Argentina, 14 attempts on goal, 9 off target, <laughs> 5 on target. France, 0 attempts on goal, full stop. I mean, if you were to oh, say yeah. to somebody, the greatest game of all time is uh, unfolding before your eyes, it's 14 attempts to 0, you'd say, I doubt that. It was like extraordinary. Yeah, it was. Now, I think there was... I. The one thing, I think Philippe is right about France's performance up until that point and, and beyond, but I think Argentina were, were exceptional. It wasn't going to be a great final at that point, uh, but the second goal was, was magnificent. And there was and because it was messy and because of, of that, it did still have a kind of a, a charge yes. that if it was just a, a, a kind of a pedestrian 2-0 victory, it wouldn't have had. But... I accept that, like that, the the transformation, incredible. Griezmann, what is it, eleven passes in the first half. Mbappe, eleven touches, I think, in the first half. Like nothing happening for France. Yeah. Um, and for that then to to transform, you know, the 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 changes Deschamps made being so so critical to that. Um, mm. But it's just, it's 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 a, it's. I don't think just and then and then for it to to flow and to ebb and flow the way it did after that. Um, I think I, you know. Again, we see so many. Like the thing about the, about this final, and the thing about this tournament is, is an, we see a lot of World Cups where there are, are very exciting group stages, and then when we get into the knockout stages, the 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 prospect of elimination and the knowledge that you can just if you cling on to penalties, you will have a chance means that a lot of a lot of group a lot of knockout games become quite quite turgid and the final more than any of them. But we saw in this competition a, a number of times really gripping knockouts at you know, games like for different reasons. Netherlands, Argentina, mm. France, England, mm. um, Argentina, Croatia, it, you know, in different ways. Like, But but then the, for the final to get into extra time and have that level of, well, we're just going to go for it. Yeah. Was, mm. was was extraordinary. Yeah. I, I I absolutely. I, I can't remember an extra time that flourished like that, Philippe, with so much at stake. No, I I, I really can't. It's um, uh, how it happened. Also, when you compare it with, because um, the situation was quite similar to what happened against the Netherlands, wasn't it? When you had a team that was totally out of the game and suddenly found a way back in, and you think, oh, what's going to happen? And in the ne Netherlands Argentina game, what happened is that. Everybody went back to square one and thought, we're just going to watch each other for 30 minutes and find out what we are actually uh, like in the, in, in the penalty shootout. In this particular case, that was completely different. Argentina reacted, and we're actually the first to react in the first period of extra time. And suddenly they found some of the fluency back, and then France countered that. And it was the counter was countered, and the counter counter was counter counter countered. <laughs> and it went on from there. And then to the obviously the two players were dominating another three, which is great to say, by the way. I'm not going to mention his name, but I'm so happy about that. Um, but the two players, the two most important players in this World Cup, suddenly took the stage as well and and 
And that is ra rather remarkable because suddenly you think, um, I mean, it's obviously it's a team game and you've got plenty of heroes, inverted commas, you know, McAllister, um, Martinez, uh, you could carry on, and, and Andy Maria, who was absolutely magnificent. And on the French side as well, young Colomwani, you know, coming on. Brilliant. And Marcus Turam, he was, they, they were absolutely, and, and, and Deschamps was, for me, had his best game ever as mm. a French manager. Kingsley Coleman as well, it was an incredible uh, Incredible, and, and coming back from the, vi coming back, you know, from, from a virus as well, we we know he wasn't 100%, and there were quite a few others like that, and and of course Killian, you know, being reborn. Um, but, then what happened? Yes, was 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 absolutely, absolutely, utterly, utterly crazy. And I think that it shows again that what we love about football is not necessarily, even though we love the technique and everything, and even though I think that Kylian Mbappe's second goal, that volley, is perhaps for me the greatest goal ever scored after Carlos Alberto, perhaps in a World Cup final. Yeah. Are we allowed to say that? No, I, mean, I think I it... think we are. I think I think we're all hesitant to. Uh, 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 exclaim at how phenomenal this this was in, in, in so many different ways because you feel like you'd be accused of recency bias but I, I think you're right I mean because I, we were just saying well Liam Brady was on the um, uh, television coverage here at half time Philippe and he was saying well I think Argentina's second goal is the best goal I've ever seen in a World Cup final and it was like Mbappe <laughs> heard him and said well have a look at this buddy <laughs> yes well you, you you can say that um um, in terms of balance, poetry, balletic quality, it was perhaps the most the most astonishing. Um, I, I still think that Carlos Alberto one is will probably never be better. But there you go. I, I'm showing my age, perhaps. But the and, the, uh, the Carlos Alberto one, Philippe, was a, was a kind of coronation, wasn't it? It was the kind of the yeah, the, but that's the, what's the, beautiful. That was why it was beautiful. It was the expression of of the set their celebration and the way art. and Brazil and their art. Whereas, whereas yes. the and it was it was the, the 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 kind of the cherry on the on the on the on the cake. Whereas this the second Argentina goal was in the middle of the in the in in of the action and mm. it was it, it, it was it was decisive or it appeared to be decisive. And I also yeah, think it, we, no, it was a thing of beauty. I mean, we we all agree on that, and uh, that 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 cannot be that cannot be doubted. Uh, that the fact it was against the team that had totally lost the plot. Um, Certainly, I mean, maybe you know, my point of view would would not be any, perhaps a, a neutral's point of view, uh, because obviously I was quite emotionally invested in that final. But I, I really got the feeling that that kind of goal would never be scored against a proper team, and that France were were not there, and uh, which was quite shocking. It was looking like a, a team like warming up, uh, being up for it against a, a team that simply had. Hadn't turned up, but again, what made this game extraordinary is that suddenly, from its vault, uh, suddenly we heard a creak, and um, out of the coffin uh, jumped <laughs> Kylian Mbappe and and and, the, and and France again, and the the dead were undead, and the zombies found life, mm. and and it was extraordinary. And then afterwards, I have to say, yes, the last, what is it, 50 minutes of the game, mm. 45 minutes of the game, absolutely extraordinary. In terms of emotion, again, it's proved that, you know, uh, it, it was a point at which I think uh, tactics had, had gone out, not just of the window, but every possible opening in the house. Uh, nobody knew exactly which position anybody was playing in anymore, and which was wonderful and riotous. And which is one of the reasons perhaps why we could be so emotionally involved in that because we felt probably as we would have felt as, as children when we played the game and, and when things were going a bit crazy and all the players becoming a bit crazy and um, losing, trying to preserve some kind of, um, of rational approach to the game, I suppose, in some areas, but otherwise totally falling in for, into the chaos and embracing it. And there is nothing, I mean, football is better than any other game um, at embracing chaos. And mm. when it does so, it is absolutely beautiful. And and that's what we saw actually yesterday, which is why, you know, we should, I shouldn't feel sad. I don't feel sad at all about you know, anything that happened. It was quite, quite glorious. Oh, as really? long again, sure. and I, I'm afraid that I, I insist on that, as long as you obviously take the game and um, away from what was 
the frame for the for, for well, the game in this competition as a whole, which is a huge problem, which we shouldn't, uh, you know, football shouldn't be used to um, to erase that. One hundred percent. It was a I, 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 it was a fabulous world goal, despite many other yes. things. Yes. Well, listen, and, we'll, we, and will, we will, can will. thank the players and the supporters about that. Yeah. Rest assured, I'll give you a chance at the end. We will, we will finish on that point, perhaps uh, via discussing the trophy presentation to Messi. We will, we will the perfect um, well, amongst other things, imagery yes. uh, yeah. to, to encapsulate your point. We will finish on that absolutely because I, I, even amidst the madness yesterday, I mean, the context was never very far away. I'll come to Philippe on just what went wrong with France in a moment, Dion. But Argentina, to be fair to them, have grown spectacularly across this tournament from day one against Saudi Arabia to the Mexico game, which was, I know you liked it, but was, you know, a, a fairly appalling game to mm-hmm. being, being semi passable as uh, just Messi and the rest. And it was like, well, are they, all they have is Messi. And then I found myself yesterday watching Enzo Hernandez. DePaul was spectacular as well. McAllister, you've both mentioned with Di Maria, this inspired choice on Scaloni's part and Alvarez, who has exploded into this tournament and Messi. And I found myself thinking they have gone from being not not very good to completely reliant on Messi to for a portion of that game yesterday. God, they're a bloody good team. Um, yeah. so, so, so told us about Argentina, why that 4-3-3 was so good, why it all worked, because they looked like they could give anyone a game for uh, 60 Eight, nine, seventy minutes yesterday. Well, I think they they, they did evolve, as you say, and you know you look at Lotaro when he came on um, in the final, and he was doing he was make, missing the same chances. He looked as as clumsy and awkward as he had when he was starting at the beginning of the competition. So Alvarez coming in was a huge development. I think the players found a way of playing around Messi during the tournament, which again is is isn't an unusual thing, like. Philippe will, will remember, like in 1982, Italy started very slowly. Paolo Rossi, yeah, um, I think, I think, yeah, I think it was it was it was it was against it was against Brazil when he he scored he he finally scored I think, and then he ended up as as top goal scorer mm. and got the golden boot. But it, it it does happen to teams like, and we have we have a, a great um, tendency to kind of judge. And everyone goes into World Cups making predictions and who they fancy, and, and like they kind of they, they they sort of decide those judgments on the base of the first or second matches. And after the after the Saudi Arabia game, everyone, you know, we were you know we ourselves included when we talked after the Mexico game. So it kind of you know that was you know it's nice for Argentina to win, but they aren't they aren't going anywhere in, oh. the, in this competition. But they evolved, and it seems, and this is the other thing, and this seems ridiculous to say given who it is, but Messi got better and better and better and and like and that is you know from from the highest possible starting point and some of the the way he played you know we we talked after the Croatia game and 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 what he did to Guardiola in that game mm. which was extraordinary and it was a glimpse of 25 year old 26 year old Messi but a guy uh, play, coming up against someone 15 years younger than him and actually humiliating him through his brain through his brain and that's why like his, his hamstring injury didn't matter his hamstring isn't connected to his brain <laughs> and it's extraordinary and you watch that game yesterday and every time he gets the ball I've never th- th- we've all had that feeling with Messi where you gasp everyone gasps when he does things and even even th- that goal everyone else takes one touch Messi takes two touches but they're the, the two of the greatest touches you'll ever see one to just control and then to put that pass around, mm. you know, around, the, around the corner at high speed at high speed mm. and you're just gasping but when he gets on the ball the expectation that something is going to happen now I've never seen it, anyone like it for just it being just and maybe Maradona in 86 in a very different way but just to, and the way he makes things happen now is a lot more through prompting it's not going to be as many runs and dribbles and beating people but he will do it mm. but it's, something is going to happen and the expectation usually is matched by the reality and even if it's just a pass the amount of times he makes a pass that you didn't you didn't see yeah. you didn't imagine and you're saying my god that's everything has changed from that pass mm. So I think he grew into into things as well, which is a ridiculous. Saying Messi grew into the tournament is, is kind no, of ridiculous, I, I, but I, I think mean. he did actually. He became in sync with that team in a way that wasn't ov- clearly obvious um, at, after at, after the Saudi Arabia game. Philippe, I think uh, 
a lot of people, myself included, would have watched the opening minutes and thought, wow, this is unusual. France, the more experienced of the two teams when it comes to World Cup finals, are the team that are nervous. And then after about 15 minutes, a lot of us would have thought, wow, the French camp had been riddled with COVID and we just haven't heard the full extent of it. That that They, they were bereft yeah. of of energy. That was, I mean, as I was watching the first 20 minutes, I thought, my goodness, uh, this is akin to the All Blacks in South Africa in 1995. This is just a, a dud of a game. And because they were that bad that something cataclysmic along those lines was the only explanation for how terrible they were right across the pitch, almost. Yeah, um, Deschamps alluded to it. Uh, didn't want to make excuses, which is all to his credit, by the way. But the fact is a number of players looked really under par. Um, I mean, the, I think Rafael Varane in particular was the shadow of the, the player he'd been before that in the tournament. Not all of them. Upamecano, who had been also fallen to the virus, was probably of the starters, the one who had the better game or the best game of them all. Uh, over 120 minutes, of course. I'm not talking about the last 40 minutes when Kylian Mbappe had a rather better game than almost anybody, actually anybody else on the pitch. Um, but yes, they, they were obviously impaired by that. Um, but again, to Deschamps' credit, he didn't use that as an excuse. Mm. Um, it's it's part of the things that you have to, uh, to deal with in the tournament. It was an unfortunate. It was not the best of preparation for a big final. Um, when it comes to the actual team, the, uh, the experience of the 2018 World Cup, um, I'm sorry, I do not have the numbers at my disposal right now, but there are quite a few players who were just simply were not there. For them, it's almost irrelevant experience. For them, the most recent experience was the complete failure against Switzerland at the Euro, mm. uh, rather than the triumph in, in Moscow in 2018. Uh, but if I can just um, uh, add something for, um, for Argentina, uh, they were, by the way, my pre-tournament favorites, and I've got the tweets to prove it. Um, because I thought they were the most balanced team, uh, the most balanced version of Argentina we'd seen for a long time. And the extraordinary thing is that they arguably played without their best centre-back yesterday. I mean, everybody would have said Lisandro was the obvious choice for centre-back, right? Would you agree with that? Yeah, I would have thought so. And, and, you, and you see the way that some of the players just grew in, in, into, I mean, not just we realized, and they were missing probably the player who'd been the most important in terms of building up the team uh, in the Copa America, which was Los Celso, was not there, was missing, mm. and, and, and who had been absolutely key to create this much more balanced Argentinian team. But it, it's not, it's a very, it's, that's why I say it's a different one from the one which won the uh, 1986 World Cup with Maradona, because Maradona had about two, three players who were, I would say, of uh, international level, Borussia, Jorge Valdano, and that's more or less it. Um, this is different. It's it's a much better. It was a much better Argentinian team, which, by the way, doesn't take anything away from the performance of um, its its star player, who was um, absolutely amazing. But we've run out of um, words to describe what this man has brought to the game. Mm. On um, the French selection, so. Di Maria was a nightmare for France for obvious reasons yep. and uh, Koundé was tasked with trying to stop him yep. and, and various people made the point well he's not a natural right back why has Pavard yep. fallen so massively out of favour because that, that really dealt potentially I mean a fatal blow to France obviously the game took another several gazillion twists and turns uh, from 2-0 uh, onwards but that could have been uh, irretrievable So so why uh, has Deschamps lost all faith in Pavard, or, or, or what's the thinking there? Um, simply the thinking that um, Pavard is not quite as a complete um, a fallback to do what um, Deschamps is expecting a France fullback to do. Uh, the very high regard that uh, he has for Joel Koundé, um, the belief that he has that Koundé is a player who is uh, polyvalent, can play in several positions. Mm -hmm. And to be absolutely honest, if, uh, if Colomouane's go, um, shot goes in, we're never asking this question. Mm. Because uh, I, that's the thing, is that Deschamps has had to take a number of decisions which no other national team manager has had to take before, during and during the tournament. 
France was at one point in October minus 14 of its players, 14, uh, because of injury, because of illness and so forth. He managed to cobble uh, a group of players that went to the World Cup. And even then, it was the smallest squad of, of them all at the World Cup because the players kept going missing and he didn't go with the full complement. And then he loses the Ballon d'Or, Karim Benzema. And some people say, actually, it's a good thing because it means that the team can play around Giroud and Griezmann and so forth. Okay, but he still lost the Ballon d'Or. And, and you carry on. It's like this throughout all the tournament. He has constantly to invent new ways to make a team, which I honestly thought would struggle far more than it had, uh, that, uh, that it has, um, to bring it all the way to the final and being within Emiliano Martinez uh, spooking um, Chouameni out of his penalty kick uh, away from uh, from a World Cup title. Yeah. Because also, you know, we shouldn't forget that because there are loads of things to admire in Argentina. There are also loads of things that I didn't admire much in that performance yesterday and we shouldn't forget about them completely. Even if I don't want to use them as excuses or say blah, blah, blah. But there are things which were a little bit, let's say, on the edge uh, of, of acceptability of as what you should be able to do on a on a football pitch, and they certainly went beyond that point. Uh, but, what, uh, what was the most egregious example of that? I think um, I think Christian Romero should have been sent off. Uh, I think his he was, I don't know. I I, I will stop because I need to check myself here. Um, he's very clever. He's a very dirty player, and he showed it. And Emiliano Martinez is a player, I mean, I'm an Arsenal fan, I absolutely loved it when he was playing for Arsenal, because I enjoyed the uh, what he brought to uh, the aggression of the team. But when you're playing against him, it, you sit in a quite different light. And what he did in the penalty shootout was totally inexcusable, and should have been punished, and wasn't. But there you go, that's the way it is. And... I'm not going to say that Argentina are not worthy winners because they certainly are worthy winners. There's absolutely no doubt about that. It's just that, you know, I'm, it's only 24 hours. So please, please bear with me. I need to uh, process, as people yeah. say. And there are things which still stick in the throat. And the way he threw the ball away from Chua, from Chouameni is, I uh, really don't like that at all. Fair enough. Um, we've touched a little bit on Messi, but I guess, Dion, the point was made by Miguel Delaney even I saw yesterday in the Sunday Independent that in advance of the game this was the first time since 74 and Cruyff and Beckenbauer that two of the established superstars were coming up against each other you know you, you could pick other examples uh, Zidane Ronaldo in 98 but maybe the 98 final elevated Zidane to a level he wasn't quite at in people's eyes but we can quibble over these things but certainly 2022 Mbappe versus Messi was was the real selling point akin to Cruyff Beckenbauer and then the the insane thing is it manifested that way I mean Kyle Walker and Mbappe was talked about for a week that game was not about Mbappe and Kyle Walker so it was just extraordinary the way it happened we've talked um, Messi what does this final do to Mbappe's status now in a world with Erling Haaland and various others knocking around it feels like he's um just managed to put himself on a different plateau entirely. He has. I, I think he has. I think I would say he's a, he's still on a, he's still a level below where Messi is, but because I don't think there's ever been a player like Messi. Yeah. And I don't want to bring it back to Messi because you've asked about Mbappe, but I think that's the, the starting point. He has elevated himself above the, the others. You know, the, the Haaland's coming. The Haaland coming through in terms of the next generation. But again, as Philippe has said, you know, for a long time, like it was an extraordinary performance in on both senses yesterday, because for the first for the first hour, it was it was something different. It was mm. like there's nothing here from Mbappe. There's nothing. There's, this is not uh, this is not a contest, and and then it obviously exploded. He exploded into life. But you you know the, what what happened, and that and that was and that again was a kind of. Uh, it wasn't sustained brilliance. Okay, it, it was it, you know clearly because the goals came so quickly, but it was it was it was it was moments of magic that that transformed everything, and and you you know that's um, they are huge. But I I still think it was it was a performance that for so long it was like this is this is this is not a contest, 
and then he then he did what he did and it it has taken him to another level than those other people you mentioned but i i do feel it's it's one of those i i feel now and again this is this is in the in 24 hours afterwards in the kind of still in the kind of in the high yeah. of it i feel well argentina won the world cup what Mbappe did, getting that, getting a hat trick, getting you know, getting the golden boot, all those things are are are, are great. Yeah. But ultimately, um, you now he got them back into the final. But I I do feel that there is there is one kind of story, there is one there is there is really in, in every sense there is one winner from this from this. No, final. I, I I totally take the point. I suppose if you look at the first seventy minutes where Teo Hernandez has maybe the worst. Uh, performance of his career and uh, DePaul does a number of him on him and Molina has, is, is touch tied to Mbappe and Francis Central midfield has gone missing so there's just no dynamism there it's, it's a disaster for me what was so extraordinary about the Mbappe performance is he was playing in a team that wasn't functioning whatsoever uh, he was 2-0 down in the World Cup everybody's body language uh, had a certain uh, depression about it because they felt well it's, it's gone away from us and it's easy for the type of player Mbappe is to get into a state of flow when things are going well and to, you know, in his early performances in the tournament he was getting lots of touches and he, he, he you know, he got a feel for the game and a feel for everything around him and, and, and produced amazing things. Whereas to spring to life from, well, to take Philippe's analogy, from death, I could just, mm. like it, was, it was dead. He was dead. France were dead. It was dead. Uh, to spring to life the way he did and the second goal to take it the way he did and, and not even to take a touch I just found myself I, like did you not find yourself screaming well Philippe you probably did but I, I did find myself oh, yeah, I, screamed, it was yeah, just involuntary that I, I just thought what am I this is yeah, off just, the charts it is extraordinary but I, I, I think there's a different uh, talent required and a different ability required to do that than to uh, he can do both though can't he well, well, well you're talking about the first first 70 minutes that comes after a quarter final and a semi final where he hadn't really delivered either, mm. um, and that was that. That is that is the thing that is you know when we when we talk about Messi growing through the tournament, you go you go into the quarter final, you go into and like, uh, and you know I, I saw I read David Walsh's piece about about Southgate and Kyle Walker felt this demonstrated that he was the best right back in the world the way he kept Mbappe quiet, but then it happened against Morocco and Hakimi as well, and. Um, I think f- those two matches, and then what you saw for a, for an hour, were kind of they t- they tell one aspect of the of the of the Mbappe story, and then he exploded into life, and he and he did as I said those moments of brilliance, mm. and they are extraordinary. And the second goal is is incredible, but I th- I still think there is there you know the sustained sustained brilliance to kind of keep a team to drive a team into those positions. Is something that you would also want from a player like that over the course of three matches, no, like I, the quarterfinal, I, I accept and the semi-final. Yeah, no, I accept and it, Philippe. You, you can, you can settle a touch. I, I, I'm not sure Mbappe is that type of player where, no, where he's you not. sustain no, he's not. a team. He, he, no, he's he does not, need a functioning team around him. I, and I just thought to come to life the way he did was like scary good I mean it, 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 it elevated yeah. him in my mind I suppose is what I'm trying to say he also comes to life when Deschamps takes the decision to put him down the middle hmm. he prefers and, being on the uh, left though doesn't he well he's a kind of he's an inside forward that's the way I would describe him so he likes being in a 4-3-3 three, three to the left with, with the uh, uh, the liberty of coming from the left and going in inward and and when Marcus Thuram comes on so you've got Colomwani and, and Marcus Turam, who are very direct players, very, very dangerous players, both of them, and who both were absolutely terrific. And But he's not playing in the same role. And suddenly he's got a bit of service. Uh, nobody is saying that Colum, um, I must think Colomwani, but uh, Kylian Mbappe is the, is the finished article or anything like that. He, he does disappear in games. And if you had to give him... Uh, a note out of 10 uh, on the 75th minute, you would probably go um, four, three, something like that. Sure. Not more, not more than that. 
But then he does these extraordinary things. When he's put in the right conditions, you know, it's, it's not a one-man band. The reason why France came back in the in the match, of course, it was the uh, uh, Bappe was there to to finish and and to score. I mean, three penalties, if, you know, yeah, two penalties and one in the shootout against perhaps one of the best shot stoppers in a penalty shootout there is on, on the planet, which is quite extraordinary. And take, of course, this extraordinary second goal. But that's also because suddenly, um, I mean, he doesn't. He's not the one who creates the penalty. It's Colomwani, isn't it? Yes, it is. Yeah. So it's the young guys whom, whom um, Didier Deschamps has thrown in very early on, forty-first minute, which is something that no one would have expected. Um, who actually take the game by the scruff of the neck and bring everybody else else back in, and. The great merit of of Mbappe in in that is that he feels it, and he finds in himself the resources, mental and physical resources, the technical resources have always been there, to be on the same tune as those young guys who've come on and decided to shake shake it up a little bit. And to be honest, the penalty is a penalty, but it's a bit of a stroke of luck, mm-hmm. as any penalty would be. You know, decision like. By the way, the first Argentinian penalty, many people would say, well, if it hasn't been given, you wouldn't think it's a scandal, but that's the way it is. Mm-hmm. And But the, the extraordinary thing is that Mbappe, and he's there again. I mean, how many goals is it, has he scored now in the World Cup final? Is it five? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because that was not the first time he scored. Yeah. And um, so he is um, he's one of those very, very special ones. And uh, But a completely different... Uh, player from, from Messi, but you can argue the end, uh, that, you know, when uh, you're talking about uh, the game against Croatia, but until he did that number on Vardiol, and by the way, I don't think Vardiol is that bad in it. Uh, it. Messi just manages to cross the ball at the end. But up until then, had he been supernatural? I'm not so sure. Mm. He also is one of those players who can drift in and out of games, but he doesn't have an impact, which is different because he's first and foremost a collective player, whereas Mbappe uh, is a player who tends to make the decision by himself and 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 uh, decide things by himself because uh, he's is in unbelievable speed, which is something that Messi doesn't have. Messi is, you know, takes more part in the game, but you know, Mbappe has just or will just on turn twenty four this week. Tomorrow, isn't it? And um, so there's more to see. And I have to say, I'm looking forward to seeing actually what it, where, what it can become. Because it's, um, you know, by the way, that uh, many of the, why many Brazilians were um, supporting Argentina, which, to be honest, comes as a bit of a surprise if you know South American football. Apparently, there's, um, uh, there's a, a backstory, which is the fact that should Mbappe have won the World Cup, that would have put him on the same um, level as Pelé with 58 and uh, 62. Mm. And that they don't want uh, the king to ever be challenged. So they were quite happy to uh, have this come out of the window. Although at the at the cost of having Messi win the World Cup, which puts him up at, at a certain level. To... It's a personal perspective, absolutely, <laughs> yes. <laughs> and... Dion, give us your perspective on truly one of the great trophy presentations of all time. Oh, oh God! Um, I like the one thing I, I I will say like again, twenty four hours later is because people are getting so angry about it. You start kind of thinking, okay, really, do we need to get that angry? That angry yes. about it? Yeah. But at the moment, at the time, I felt because because it was messy, because we've waited, we've gone to the twenty fourteen final, we've seen him this has been such a big thing going right back you know because people were talking about Messi and World Cups from from 2006 yeah um, so this is this is the moment that everyone is waiting for and as Philippe said in Brazil they're waiting for it Every, I watched it with a bunch of people young and old and everyone is waiting for this moment and you want to see him and it, the one thing the other thing I will say is that the Argentina jersey, like when you look at, this is a, a diverting, but when you look at what Germany, for example, have done to their jersey at this World Cup, they've destroyed the kind of, the beauty and the <laughs> glory of it. Whereas the Argentina jersey is is pristine. It is just, you know, it, it is just a, a natural line from 86. 
and you want to see Messi collect a trophy mm. in that. And then you have Infantino getting in the way and gurning and just mugging for the cameras and won't let go of the trophy. And then and then the robe was put on him. And it just felt, it felt again like, it sort of, it, it felt like a bit of a metaphor for this World Cup in that, it, like, you, you go through all the stages and there's sort of extreme rel- reluctance of anyone to actually take to actually allow allow for a different type of World Cup, you know, this was going to be a World Cup on Qatar's terms, mm. and and th- this seemed like the final kind of metaphor for that, and that's why I think you know that's why I felt kind of angry, you know, angry at the time about it. But as I say, um, I'm 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 kind of over that, but I I do think it sums up an awful lot of what made people. There are much bigger issues, but it, it's it, it's one of the reasons why people I think felt a bit uncomfortable about this World Cup. Yeah, and I want to make a point about that too when we talk about that. Yeah, well, let's let's do that now. We've got eight nine minutes left. Uh, Philippe on the uh, trophy presentation. Well, the trophy presentation is just a kind of logical conclusion to uh, the tournament. I've seen uh, some people saying. Uh, you know, showing pictures of Pelé with a sombrero after in Mexico in 1970. Say, well, that's about the same thing. No, it's not the same thing at all. This was a trophy presentation, not just um, having fun on the pitch with your teammates and mm-hmm. some and some supporters. Uh, it was very much obviously planned, pre-planned. They had decided to do that. Whoever was going to uh, get um, the trophy, particularly happy if it is Lionel Messi, of course, who is, let's not forget, um, a Qatari employee. Um that's the other thing. Was, I mean, people, I've heard people say, "Well, if, if Messi didn't want to wear it, he wouldn't have put it on." I mean, it literally, uh, these are his employers putting it on. It was only no going to be done if it was Messi. Is that right? Yeah, that was, it was only done. Really? It was oh, done, really? No. Yeah, okay. it was. It was to honor his entire career. Right. Oh, goodness sake. Yeah. Well, Talk about hijacking. You want to? Uh, such a if, great you want, if you want, so I think, to yeah, I think winning the World Cup is to honor with the trophy career. and his teammates. Yeah, it's just, it's, it's just, it's just absolutely shocking. Um, and, and, and that's, me, if, if, if that's the case, if it's that this was, you know, his, his paymasters and it, it wasn't going to be Lloris, uh, Messi, to some degree, has allowed that to happen as well to himself. Oh, completely. I mean, I'm not saying that Louis, uh, that you know, Messi is not a, a, a very ambiguous character. There's plenty of things which, you know, to be honest, there are plenty of questions uh, which can ask, be asked of Messi. Why has he accepted to become the uh, ambassador for Saudi tourism, uh, Saudi uh, Arabia 2030? And we know that they want the World Cup in 2030 when uh, perhaps the favorite or the ex-favorite to get that World Cup is Argentina, come, for goodness sake. Uh, there are plenty of things. He's been, so, he's been also uh, advertising a number of uh, companies, particularly in the crypto industry, which are, to be honest, not necessarily companies that you should be associated with. Um, and we could carry on like that. And that is also one of the other things that we as football fans have got to live with, is that our heroes uh, do show sides of themselves which perhaps we would prefer not to see. But they're there, and we should, be, we should have our eyes open, as I hope we all had our eyes open on what happened in Qatar. We should never forget that we enjoyed the football. It was phenomenal. It was great. Uh, but we shouldn't forget how they got the World Cup. We shouldn't forget what followed them getting the World Cup. And we shouldn't forgive. And as to Infantino, listen, this is live, so I am going to stop here. This man is going to be crowned king of FIFA again in March 2023. He's had the statutes of his own organization uh, changed with his accomplices so that he can also uh, be a candidate in 2027. He's the Vladimir Putin of football. We all know that. We all know that. And and to see him trying to steal away the glory from the players, and and from one of the truly great players in the history of football, even if he's complicit in some ways, I don't know what to say. It just gives a it's a very bitter taste. I wish we could keep it as joy of Messi I mean, um, I think celebrating I mean, with his teammates, yeah, yeah, yeah. or actually sh- no. shooing away this awful in, meat merchant oh, just, just in, Bay, in, in, who was trying to get him. Uh, in the centre circle, and he shoot him away. Well done, Lionel, for that. Oh, Salt Bay, yeah, that that was one of the great moments of the World Cup, actually, telling him to go away. Uh, in defence of Infantino, a sentence I hope never to repeat, Vladimir Putin's too strong. Uh, but 
Uh, okay, take, all right. Yeah, we, we, we take the point on his contribution. As soon as he walked out in those white runners, I knew it was going to go badly. I yeah. just think that was uh, a moment where the, the alarm bells were going off. Uh, but <laughs> uh, Philippe's point about like Messi's complicit in this as well, like the, it is just, it, 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 it captures so much for the state of the game, uh, the realities of the game. Um, yeah. It was, you know, it was well, amazing. Uh, of all the players you don't want to see in that position, been given that robe because of everything that Messi represents as a footballer. Yes. He's the one you don't want to see being claimed like that. Claimed is the word, yes. But of all the people who is least likely to actually resist it, yes. it's Messi too. That's beautifully put, yeah. I agree with that. And that's, and that's the problem. Like he can, he'll tell Salt Bay to get lost. Uh, like we, we, you know, we, yeah. can, we can all do that. Yeah. Um, but with, with, with the Emir is a different matter. I think that's the problem. How for you then Will we remember this very complicated World Cup? We well, see. I think this is this is really. I think, it, and and I've done this myself, where we say like you know the football has actually somehow got FIFA out of jail, but actually what the what this magnificent of the world of the, this World Cup does it underlines how wrong it was. It doesn't mitigate it. It underlines how wrong it was because it reminds us of why people try and hijack it. Because it's so irresistible. It's, so, ir- it's yeah. so irresistible. Like Infantino came out on, on Friday and said that, you know, like, let's keep politics out of football. Football is where people <laughs> go to escape. And he's absolutely right. People do go to football to escape. And the reason, and because of that, people for a long time have realised this is a place where we, that we can hijack, hijack it because this is, we can get those people who are going to escape to, and use it for our, our own ends. Mm. And that is what has happened. So actually, the better it's been, the more it makes it, the more it stinks, the more it underlines that this tournament. Now there are some aspects of it where it might be maybe it's better because it was in it was in it was in November and December, mm. um, because the players weren't tired at the end of a, end of a long season. Those things are, but they're not. They they. You know, we didn't like them. We didn't like what it did to the to the football season. But they are not the core issues with Qatar hosting the World Cup, except that they actually they promised that they would have a summer World Cup, and one of the criteria for hosting the World Cup was being able to host it in the summer. And when they failed that, it wasn't taken off them. It was just they rearranged things. Yeah. But maybe it it helped, and maybe we will see not just when it goes to Saudi Arabia in twenty thirty, but maybe we will see the people saying. In 2026, with, with, with climate change, maybe we'll be able, maybe we have to have World Cups in in November and December in America and Mexico, wherever we go. But I think ultimately, to me, I don't see any contradiction between feeling this was a magnificent tournament and thinking this really actually underlines why this stuff matters because there is nothing like it. There is nothing like a final that Brazilians are are wanting Messi to win. That everyone is 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 stopping to watch this because it's messy, but because of every you know it just becomes what we know it is, and that's why it's wrong. It's, if it, if it didn't matter, FIFA, FIFA and Qatar could have it. Yeah, uh, Philippe. Final word. How will you remember this World Cup then? How will I what remember this World Cup? How should we remember this World Cup? Same question I asked Dion. <laughs> um. As a, uh, a a juggling exercise between uh, e- excitement and disgust, and um, uh, yes, and I, I think when I've said that, I've seen probably everything. But on the other hand, I think we are now asking ourselves the right questions about sport. It's not just about football; it could be about the Olympic Games, about actually almost all of the sports. And and by the way, I want to say when I'm comparing Mister, when I'm talking about Mister Putin, Mister Infantino, the same sentence. I'm not obviously accusing Mr. Infantino of using the same methods. I'm talking about the politics of being re-elected and changing the statutes as happened to Mr. Infantino, just to uh, to make it absolutely clear to you. Yes. Uh, there is a limit to everything, and he's not Mad Vlad. Uh, so, but yes, uh, I, I think like everybody, uh, a conflicting experience, which um, especially for somebody like me who's been uh, working on, on the Qatar World Cup for the best part of 12 years. Mm. And... Um, and then it moves on. And what I hope is that the critical uh, look that we've had on this particular World Cup, and rightly so in my view, is something that we do keep in the future for other um, versions and other competitions 
and not just in football, and that we are consistent in our approach and that we keep asking the questions from big sport when it comes to those events because sport is worth saving and football is really, really well worth saving as we were reminded by some absolutely magnificent uh, players and, and, and coaches uh, last night. That's one thing perhaps that I will take away from this World Cup. Yeah. Uh, we're over time, so I mean, it's just a quick answer. Do you, do you not come away though thinking like... What's the point? I mean, we've spent eight, nine, ten years giving out about this World Cup. People have pointed about migrant worker deaths needlessly. Yep. Nothing was done to improve the situations. Workers were dying uh, right the way through. And even in the wrapping of the bisht around uh, Messi, it's very clear this isn't about popularity. This is just about letting the world know that anything can be bought and you can all jump up and down all you want and we'll see it's you all in power. Saudi Arabia. Yeah, so it's about in, in, it's in, about a, in, power. in a way, it's 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 a more hopeless situation, I think, than I'd even anticipated. Well, the questions have been asked, and the questions are still there. Uh, there are still questions for FIFA to to res- to resolve. Uh, for example, there's been talk of this compensation fund for the workers, the migrant workers who were brought to Qatar to provide the infrastructure for this World Cup, many of whom will not see home ever again. Um, and so that's that's to be carried on. But again, you know, it, it all depends how you approach this tournament. And, and I'm speaking just for myself here. I approach this tournament from the point of view of somebody who'd actually been studying, researching and writing about it for the best part years of 12 years mm. and in, in a, with a very critical outlook on it. But I didn't want to leave to le- let those guys win and in a way to be out left out of of the celebration of football and the celebration of football has been magnificent uh, the fact that it took it leaves a very bitter taste in the mouth in some ways that's why i'm saying you know it 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 reminds you of how beautiful this, this game can be it also reminds you that it is because of this beauty that people are so keen to kidnap it and to use it to their own advantage so what I'm hoping is that in people's minds, this will be a trigger to make them think about how we can bet we, that is the fans and the players and, and the coaches and the officials, the people who actually are football, not the suits at FIFA, not the politicians and the nation states and the uh, entrepreneurs and speculators who want to use it for their own good, but what we can do possibly to bring it back to, to ourselves. Uh, there's a lot of work to be done on that front. I I, I quite agree. Mm. Uh, it's going to be a quite an uphill up, up, uphill struggle to to get that done. But at least in this tournament, beyond the great football we've seen, we've asked the proper questions. Questions which, by the way, we should already have been asking about Russia in 2018. Sure. And let's let's carry on. Let's carry on asking those questions and and say things which uh, people don't want to be said. And, and basically, yes, um, challenge them where they're, they are to be challenged and when it hurts the most. OK, fellas, we are out of time. Philippe, thank you so much for your uh, contributions across the tournament. Much appreciated. Have a nice Christmas. Thank you. Thank you. Philippe Beauclair with us on the line and Dion Fanning of The Currency. Very much the same to you. Seen a lot of you over this last month. <laughs> have, Joe. Have, have a Joe, nice have Christmas. You thank too. you. Our uh, football show coverage brought to you by Sky, all the football you love in one place across Sky Sports, BT Sport and Premier Sports. Football on Off The Ball With Sky Proud partner and supporter of the Republic of Ireland Women's National Football Team This is News Talk